Hello there, welcome to Porch In It. This is Kim. Welcome to my porch. This today is day 190th day of the year, the 190th day of the year. So we've been going through the Bible for 190 days. And today we're in Isaiah 1 through 4. So if you go with me to 1 through 4 in Isaiah, Open up your Bibles to Isaiah 1 through 4, which is after Psalms and Proverbs and, and Ecclesiastes. Um, you'll come to Isaiah. So, Lord, we just thank you for the reading of the word. We thank you for your word to us that's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword that it pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It's a discerner of the intents of the heart. Thank you, Father, for your word that's alive, it's well, and it's ministering to us every day. And as we read and partake, we receive life, and life more abundantly. And we thank you, Father, that you guide us, you lead us by the Holy Spirit. And the word gives us wisdom and, and guidance and direction. And so, Father, we thank you that we will do what you show us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So are you in Isaiah? Okay, Isaiah 1, this is the Amplified Bible. It says, the vision seen by a spiritual per perception of Isaiah, son of Amos, <clears throat> which he saw concerning Judah, the kingdom in Jerusalem, its capital, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up sons and have made them great and exalted, but they have rebelled against me and broken away from me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey his master's crib, but Israel does not know or recognize me as Lord. My people do not consider or understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons who deal corruptly. They have forsaken the Lord, they have redeposed and shown contempt to provoke the Holy One of Israel to anger. They have become utterly alienated. Why should you be stricken and punished any more, since it brings no correction? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint, feeble, sick, and nauseated. From the soul of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness or health in the nation's body. But wounds and bruises and flesh and bleeding stripes, they have not been pressed out and closed up or bound up or softened with oil. No one has troubled to seek a remedy. Because of your detestable disobedience, your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour it in your very presence. It is desolate as overthrown by aliens. And the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, is left like a deserted booth in a vineyard, like a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, like a besieged city spared, but not in the midst of desolation, but in the midst of desolation. Expect, except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant of survivors, we would have been like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Hear, O Jerusalem, the word of the Lord, you rulers or judges of another Sodom. Give ear to the law and teaching of our God, you people of another Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me unless they are the offerings of the heart, says the Lord. I have enough of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts without obedience. And I do not delay in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of he goats without righteousness. When you come to appear before me, who requires of you that your unholy feet trample my courts, bring no more offerings of vanity, emptiness, falsity, vainglory, and futility, your hollow Offerings of incense is an abomination to me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of the assemblies, I cannot endure. It is an iniquity and profanity, even in the solemn meeting, even the solemn meeting. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are an oppressive burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. 
and when you spread forth your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. And that's verse 16. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed and correct the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, sin, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Amen. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How the faithful city has become an adulterous harlot. She who has full of who was full of justice, uprightness, and right standing with God, once lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross, your wine is mixed with, with water. Your princes are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and runs after compensation and reward. They judge not for the fatherless, nor defend them. Neither does the cause of the widow come to them, for they delay or turn a deaf ear. Therefore, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will oppose myself and my adversaries and avenge myself on my enemies. I will bring my hand again upon you and thoroughly purge away your dross as with lie and take away from you your tin. And I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as of the beginning afterward you shall be called the city of righteousness the faithful city zion shall be redeemed with justice and her converts with righteousness uprightness and right standing with god but the crushing and destruction of rebels and sinners shall be together they who forsake the Lord shall be consumed, for you will be ashamed of the folly and de de degradation of the oak of terebinth trees in which you found pleasure, and you will blush with shame for the adulterous worship which you practice, the passion in flaming gardens which you have chosen, for you shall be like an oak or a terebinth whose leaf withers and like a garden that is no water. And the strong shall become like tow and become tinder and his work like a spark. And they shall both burn together with none to quench them. Okay, go to the second chapter of Isaiah. I'll be right back. Let me just get something. Okay, I had cookies in the oven and I was like, oh, I better get them out. So I did. Praise God, we got them out. Okay, so chapter two now of Isaiah. Of Isaiah. The word which Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord, Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mount of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach his ways, and that he may we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge between the nations, and shall decide for many people, and they shall bear their sword into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Surely, Lord, you've rejected and forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled from the east and with soothsayers who foretell like the Philistines. Also they strike hands and make pledge in agreement with the children of aliens. Their land is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end to their treasures. 
Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end to their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship they wor the work of their own hands with their own fingers. They have, have with their own fingers. The common man is bowed down. Also the great man is brought low and humbles himself. Therefore forgive them not, O Lord. Nem enter into the rock and hide yourself in the dust from before the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. The proud looks of man shall be brought low. The haughtiness of men shall be humbled. The Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For there shall be a day of the Lord of hosts against all who are proud and haughty and against all who are lifted up and they shall be brought low. The wrath of God will begin by coming down against all the cedars of Lebanon west of the Jordan that are high and lifted up and against all the oaks of Bajan east of the Jordan. And after that against all the mountains and all the hills that are lifted up and against every high tower and every fenced wall against all the ships of Tarshish, all the picturesque and desirable imageries for more ornament and luxury. Then the loftiness of men shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low and the Lord shall be exalted in that day and the idols shall utterly pass away. Then shall the stricken deprived of Go into the caves of the rocks, into the hole, holes of the earth from terror and dread of the Lord and from before the glory of his majesty when he arises and shakes mightily the earth. In that day men shall cast away the moles into the bait and bats, their idols of silver, their idols of gold, which they made for themselves to worship, to go into the caverns of the rocks and into the clefts of the ragged rocks from before the terror and dread of the Lord and from before the glory of his majesty when he rises to shake mightily and terribly the earth cease to trust in man whose breath is in his nostrils in which sense can be counted as having intrinsic worth wow chapter 3 for behold the Lord the God of hosts is taking away from Jerusalem and Judah the stay and staff, every kind of prop, and the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water, the mighty man, and the man of war, the judges, and the prophets, the one who foretells by divination, and the old man, the captain of fifty, and the man of rank, the counselors, and the experts, craftsmen, and the skillful enhancer, and I will make boys their princes, and with their childlessness shall they rule over them, and the people shall be oppressed each one by another and each one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly and with insolence against the old man and the lowborn against the honorable. Verse 6. When a man shall take hold of his brother in the house of the father, saying, You have a robe, you shall be our judge, and the ruler and his heap of ruin shall be under your control. In that day he shall answer, saying, I will not be a healer, and one who binds up. I am not a physician, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. You shall not make me judge and ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their speech and their deeds are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory and defy his glorious presence. Their trespassing of persons and showing of partiality with witness against them that they proclaim their sin like Sodom they do not hide it woe to them for they have brought evil say to the righteous that it shall be well with them for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds woe to the wickedness it shall be ill with them for that which their hands have done shall be done to them as for my people children are their opp oppressors Women rule over them. O oh, my people, your leaders cause you to err, and they confuse the course of your paths. The Lord stands up to contend and stand to judge the people and his people. The Lord enters into judgment with the elders of the people, with their princes, for your exaltation and oppression. You have robbed the people and ruined the country. You've devoured the vineyard, the spoil of the poor in your house. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor, says the Lord of hosts? Moreover, the Lord said, 
because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and with undisciplined eyes, tripping along with mincing and afflicted gait and making a twinkling noise with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the house of the righteous of the daughters of Zion, making them bald. And the Lord will cause them to be taken as captive and suffer the indignity of being stripped naked. In that day, the Lord will take away the, the finery of their tinkling anklets, the caps of network, the crescent head ornaments, and the pendants, the bracelets or chains, and the spangled silver veils of scarves, the headbands, and the short ankle chains attached one foot to another to ensure a measured gait the sashes, the perfume boxes, the amulets or charms suspended from the ears to neck, the signet rings, the nose rings, the festive robes, the cloaks, the stoles and the shawls and the hand caps, handbags, the hand mirrors, the, the fine linens, the turbans and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of the sweet odor of spice, there shall be the stench of rottenness and instead of girdle, a robe, and instead of a well-set bald hair, instead of a rich robe and sackcloth and searing, captives by sort scorching heat, instead of beauty, your men shall fall by the sword and your mighty men in battle. You Jerusalem's gate shall lament and mourn as those who wail for the dead, and she being ruined and desolate shall sit upon the, the ground. Chapter four, and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread and provide our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach of being unmarried. In that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the land shall be excellent and lovely to those of Israel who have escaped. He who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Everyone who is recorded for life in Jerusalem and for eternal life, after the Lord has washed away the moral filth of the daughters of Zion, pride, vanity, haughtiness, has purged the blood stains of Jerusalem from the midst of it by the spirit and the blast of judgment and by the spirit and blast of burning and sifting. And the Lord will cre create over the whole site, over every dwelling place of the Mount Zion, over her assemblies, a cloud, a smoke by day, and the shining of flaming fire by night. For over the glory shall be a canopy of defense, divine love and protection. There shall be a pavilion for shade in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and a shelter from the storm, from rain. Thank you, Jesus. So that's the end of Isaiah 1 through 4. So Lord, we just bless the reading of the word right now. We thank you. You are... You are a shade over us. You cover us from evil. You protect us. You keep us. When we walk and talk and we find your voice, your name, your, your voice is heard to us. When we listen to your voice, your voice is heard. And we will obey and we will listen and we will be protected. We will be blessed. Because Lord God, when we follow you, you lead us by your spirit when we follow you. You show us, you direct us, you give us the best ways, you give us favor. And Father, we know, Lord God, that these scriptures here are to teach us to follow you, to hearken unto your voice, to listen to you, to come to you, to follow you, to choose you. And as we do, there's victory in every area of our life. And we thank you for the next generation, for our family, for the next generation will follow what you have shown us. And we just thank you right now, Lord, that you cleanse every evil off of us, every thought, every intention, everything that has come against us that's been um, hurtful from others. Lord, we cleanse it right now. We ask you to cleanse and purify our hearts. We forgive. We choose to forgive because you've given us that forgiveness now. And as we choose to forgive, that cleanses us. It goes off us like you know, like water off the back of a duck. It cleanses us, it purifies us, and we want all that you have for us. And we know that the time is short and Jesus is coming back and we need 
to reach the souls for Jesus, and that's the most important. And I just thank you for your for the reading of the word, and we thank you for coming. And remember, your words are your way to victory. Thank you for coming. See you tomorrow on Fortunate.